Question, is it possible to lose your soul through complaining? You know, th th through whining. Is it possible to like go to hell for whining or is it possible to go to hell for complaining? Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. A lot of times we think that what, what would cost us our soul are only the really, really big things, or only the, the kind of the massive sins that would be like grave sins or mortal sins. And, and in some sense, that would be the case. But is it possible for there to be small things that we hold on to so fully that they begin to hold on to us? And I think that complaining or grumbling or whining, I guess, is a, is a great example. Here's, and here's why. Um, because I think it's, well, in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, he says, do everything without grumbling or complaining. Now, he doesn't say that if, if you do complain, if you do grumble, then you're going to hell, that kind of thing. He doesn't say that. But it indicates that there is something in grumbling, there's something in complaining, there's something in whining that, if left unchecked, can do something to us that we ultimately, well, talk about St. Louis, St. Louis, I'll talk about C.S. Lewis in a second, that C.S. Lewis says there are some people who ultimately end up becoming a grumble. Instead of just grumbling something they do, they become a grumble. Instead of complaining is something they do, they become a complaint. Now, in order to talk about this, let's clarify some things. First thing is that we recognize there's a, there's a positive power to complaint, right? There's a positive power to grumbling. For one, there might be a situation where complaint is required. Like, it's necessary to complain. Why? Because um, there's something that needs to be said, right? There's an injustice that is being done and someone needs to point that out. And someone might say, you're just complaining. Well, no, I'm pointing out the truth. I'm pointing out the reality that this thing over here is wrong. And so I need to complain about that. Also, another thing could be, um, it's just being authentic or being honest. I say, I'll say it like this. Now, there's a way to be honest and complaining. That's the Minnesotan way, which is a passive aggressive way where we just kind of like float it out there. That uh, the ability to kind of complain without complaining, you know, that kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the complaint that actually can be helpful, which is I'm telling you straightforwardly, if that's the right word to, way to say it, I'm telling you in a very clear way, here is where I'm at with this whole project. Here's where I'm at with this whole process. Here's where I'm at with this situation. And for open and honest relationships, that might need to be said. So complaint can be um, helpful when it comes to, like, an, there's an injustice that needs to be called out. It can also be helpful when there's something going on inside of me or in our relationship here that needs to be spoken. In fact, we can recognize that um, complaint can be a gift. We have to say this. There are times when complaint is a gift, when complaint is a positive force in this world. Great. Done. We agree, I think, on that. Moving on. Is it possible, though, for complaint to be something that not only is now destructive to relationships, and not only is destructive to uh, the positive steps forward, but actually can be something whereby we might lose our souls? And I think the answer is going to be ultimately yes. I think there are some times when we're complaining or we're grumbling or we're, we're whining, and we can maybe do it in one of two ways or maybe more ways. One is, this is how I see the situation, and there's no remedying the situation, and I'm just going to see all the negatives. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna see the negatives. I'm going to see the things that are wrong or that I see as wrong, and what I'm doing is I'm limiting my perspective. I'm limiting how I see reality to all of the negatives. That's one thing, and that we realize, like that's a distortion of reality. That's a distortion of how things actually are. If I only see things through the lens of the critic, then I am not actually seeing things truly. I need to be able to acknowledge both the, the goodness and the badness, the, the wholeness and the brokenness of every given situation. If I only always point out the negatives, then again, I'm not seeing the situation truly. The second thing is I might see that as my role. I might see like, oh, my role here is I, I'm, the, I'm the one who always points out the truth and I'm the one who always complains. I'm the one who always has to be that, that gadfly. Nothing is good enough for me. And we can actually end up enjoying that role so much so that it becomes a part of who we are. And this, and this, this can happen to every one of us. There are times when for all of us, as I said, I'm a relatively positive person where I recognized there were a moment, there was a moment where I started complaining and I became the complaint. I started grumbling and I became the grumble. So quick story time with Father Mike. <laughs> Years ago, uh, my mom wanted family photos with all of the family, right? So with my two parents and all the kids and all the spouses and all the grandkids and everyone. And so um, they had, my mom had color-coded 
polos for everyone to wear. So she and my mom, she and my dad had a certain color of polo shirt, and and this family had a certain color. This family, and then the single kids, my oldest sister, my little brother, and myself, we all had another color of polo. Like oh, we're the single kids club, and so the color wasn't a color I would normally pick for myself. And at first, I just started like joking about. A, that oh, we're all the single kids having to wear the same color, and B, this is such a lame color. And I remember joking with my sister-in-law about this and thinking like, oh yeah, here's this color, this is so stupid, blah, 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 blah. And then pretty soon, that joking became like something where I was actually, it was souring my heart, for lack of a better way to say it. It was something that I began to believe. It was something I began to resent. And it was something I began to like keep on complaining. Like I, oh man, thanks be to the Lord for the rest of my family because they were able to rise above my complaining. And I even myself couldn't rise above my complaining. I started to complain. All of a sudden, I became the complaint. I started just joking about it. And all of a sudden, I realized I can't stop joking. And actually, not only can I not stop joking, I now believe all the things that I was saying about like how awful, how stupid, how dumb, all these kind of things, all this criticism about this color, color of polo that I was wearing. It's so dumb right now. But I remember even at the moment saying, oh my gosh, what is happening? I can't stop. I have now become this complaint. And I realize that left unchecked, any one of us, that can be any one of us, whether that's embracing resentment, and now I've become resentment. That's embracing anger, and now I've become this anger. I, embracing a certain jealousy or envy, and now like I can't let go of it. It's, I'm not holding on to it, it's holding on to me. Every single one of us can, so C.S. Lewis, as I mentioned, in his book, uh, The Great Divorce, which is just one of my favorite books of all time, he talks about there's this choice between heaven and hell. And there's this character who is encountering a person from heaven who has come to like convince them to choose heaven. And all they can do is complain. All they can do is grumble. And it's, it's uh, indicated, it's uh, represented by this, what, C.S. Lewis calls a tragedian. So this, this person who sees everything as a big tragedy, sees everything as this big, and there's nothing good enough, there's nothing that is, is real, there's nothing true, there's nothing good, there's nothing that can be praised. It can only be complained about. And this person, this tragedian, becomes bigger and bigger as the actual person becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And even though the invitation is, let go of the grumble, let go of the complaint, let go of this drama, the tragedian, right, the person who embraces tragedy, grows bigger as the other, as I said, as, as the actual person grows smaller. In C.S. Lewis, in talking about this, he writes this. He writes, he says, hell, actually, so again, is it possible to lose your soul over grumbling or complaining? He says, hell begins with a grumbling mood, always complaining, always blaming others. But you're still distinct from it, right? That, that's how I was with that, that polo shirt. You're still distinct from it. But he goes on to say, you may even criticize it in yourself and wish you could stop it. Again, that's exactly what was happening to me. I'm like, why am I saying this? I love my family. This is a decent shirt. It brings out the color of my eyes. Whatever, whatever. I'm just joking. Anyways, he says, but there may come a day when you can no longer. It begins with this thing outside of you, but there may be a day when you can't stop. There will be no you left to criticize the mood or even to enjoy it but just the grumble itself, going on forever and ever like a machine. It's not a question of God sending us to hell. In each of us, there is something growing which will be hell unless it is nipped in the bud. In each of us, there is something growing which will be hell unless it, unless it is nipped in the bud. And that's why I bring up complaining, but it could be anything. It could be anger. It could be lust. It could be greed. It could be envy. It could be any one of those things that is not of God. Or even if it's initially of God. Remember, there's a positive power of complaint. But unless I surrender it to Jesus, unless I repent to the Lord and say, God, do something with this, we won't be holding on to it. It will hold on to us. And there might not be any us left other than the grumble, other than the complaint, other than the whining, other than whatever that thing is. And that will have the potential, to have the power to take our soul, to take us and replace it with this caricature of us. Thanks be to God. I mean, thanks be to God for Jesus Christ because what he gives us is he gives us not the ability simply to not complain or not to have anger, or not to have lust, not to have this frustration or resentment, but he gives us the grace to be able to turn to him and say, Lord, help me in this complaint. Help me in this anger. Help me in this frustration. Help me in this envy or greed or whatever the thing is. And free me from it so I can be free to actually be the person you created and redeemed me to be. From us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.